this is Dr. Rutledge, and I'm going to be doing a presentation on a topic that has recently come up on the internet, and that's confusion about what is and is not an MGB, a mini gastric bypass. And there's a lot of discussion about naming the MGB, and they want to call it uh, the single anastomosis or omega loop, and anyone I think is comfortable, they can go ahead and choose to do a single anastomosis bypass, but that does not make it the mini gastric bypass. The mini gastric bypass has some unique features that those of us who perform it in exactly this way feel are attractive. And I'm going to present some of those biases that go along with a slide presentation that uh, is available on the internet called the MGB Done Wrong. And so the title is Mini Gastric Bypass, and that would be the way we think it should be done, the single anastomosis, and uh, other people who perform variations on this particular technique we think are doing it wrong. Not that they are wrong, but they should not, we would like to say, they should not call it the mini gastric bypass. It's something else, it's a single anastomosis, it's an omega loop, whatever they might choose to call it, they're welcome to. But the mini gastric bypass, we believe, is unique in certain ways, and we think it's advantageous. And when you stray from those ways, you still are doing a very legal operation, if you would like to say so. We don't think there's any problems with that, but we believe that there are some unique features of the mini gastric bypass that make it attractive, and it's what we recommend. And we would like to ask others if you are going to do precisely what we believe is our unique approach then call it a mini gastric bypass and if you want to do an omega loop or something else that's fine we believe that they are inferior but that we don't mind it what we're worried about is the confusion when surgeons perform different surgical techniques that are not exactly like the mini gastric bypass and today we're going to talk about the particular step in the mini gastric bypass called creating the gastric pouch. And it seems hard to believe that such a relatively straightforward step could lead to such different approaches, but I think you'll see as we discuss this um, that there are a lot of issues where others are doing what they call a mini gastric bypass. It's not a mini gastric bypass to our way of thinking at all. So. If you don't mind, choose a name other than mini gastric bypass unless you're following these precise surgical techniques because we believe the outcomes will be contaminated by these other approaches. If you want to do an omega loop, if you want to do a single anastomosis, whatever you want to call it, that's fine. Please feel free to use that. But mini gastric bypass implies some very strict criteria which we believe are critical for success. So again, simplistically, anybody can do a single anastomosis. That's all kinds of things. SATI, the single anastomosis, and sparing the pylorus, and uh, that's fine. They do a, almost a 70 to 80% gut bypass. We think uh, we disagree with that. We disagree with the pouch. Not that we disagree that they can't be uh, open to doing it. We just don't think that's a mini gastric bypass. Um, what we would say, in particular, we're concerned about, and the reason for this video, is a lot of people are doing all these different approaches and then calling it a mini gastric bypass. So to eliminate confusion, we're going to try and be very strident to separate different kinds of single anastomoses uh, and doing a bypass from a mini gastric bypass. Mini is unique in several ways, and we're going to talk about one. So recently on the internet, they had a drawing, a picture, a hand drawing of an operation and underneath it said mini gastric bypass but it wasn't a mini gastric bypass at all in fact it had a large proximal gastric pouch going lateral from the EG junction to a loop gastrojejunostomy high in the chest near the EG junction and if you look at that it's essentially the old mason loop but underneath it said mini gastric bypass and that really generated the heat that uh, led to this presentation. We'd like to talk a little bit about that and just basically say no, 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 no. That's not a mini gastric bypass. You could call it a one anastomosis bypass, you could call it a loop bypass, you could call it an old mason loop bypass. It's not a mini gastric bypass. And that 
differentiation we think is lost on a lot of critics of the MGB, but also a lot of the new surgeons who are adopting what they think is MGB. And that misunderstanding we'd like to address by providing this resource for surgeons and patients to differentiate these approaches, both for personal surgical criticism, for understanding, and also for new surgeons who might be considering a mini gastric bypass, which is not a single anastomosis, is not an omega loop, although they all use a loop. Do you see how this can get confusing? All right, well, we'd like to honor, of course, one of the founders of bariatric surgery, Edward Mason, from the University of Iowa. He created a loop gastrojejunostomy high in the chest, adjacent to the EG junction, and that was called just the gastric bypass in 1967. And the odd thing about that is, very quickly after he started doing that, people recognized that it led to severe esophageal bile reflux, as well as other complications, and pretty quickly after that, uh, modifications occurred. He went on to uh, abandon the gastric bypass and advocate for the vertical banded gastroplasty, which subsequently was shown to fail. And other surgeons adopted what they do now, which is a ruin Y gastric bypass. And so bariatric surgeons thought they learned something. Bariatric surgeons, oh, loops are bad. Okay, and so we're going to talk a little bit about that. Bariatric surgeons concluded loops are bad. Bariatric surgeons concluded from the failure of the old Mason loop gastric bypass, which was just called the gastric bypass, that loops are bad because we learned it. And in fact, there was a very strong belief in that. But we have to remember the specific anatomy of the old Mason loop gastric bypass. It had a small proximal gastric pouch, short, and the gastrojejunostomy was placed high up in the chest, near the diaphragm and near the EG junction. And this led, with especially as the pouches became smaller by other surgeons, to significant bile esophagitis with bile reflux. Okay. Now if you'll get a good picture, what you'll find is that this old gastric bypass is very different from the mini gastric bypass. Okay, and that's what we're going to say probably a dozen or more times in this presentation. The mini gastric bypass, the gastrojejunostomy, is not placed in the proximal body of the stomach. It's not placed high in the abdomen near the chest. It's not placed adjacent to the esophagus. It's placed where most Bill Roth II gastrojejunostomies are placed after a distal gastrectomy. That is to say, distal in the stomach, not proximal. Okay, so for the uh, non-surgical listener, the loop done in 1967 placed the loop of intestine up at the top of the abdomen, at the top of the stomach, near the esophagus, which we're going to discuss. General surgery tells us is always wrong and will always fail, and that the mini gastric bypass places the gastrojejunostomy, the connection between the stomach and the intestine, down lower on the stomach at the junction between what's called the body and the antrum of the stomach where the general surgeons of the world routinely place connections between the stomach and the bowel every single day including cancer surgeons, trauma surgeons and other oncologic surgeons who routinely perform connections to reconnect the stomach to the bowel after major gastric surgery. Okay, so Top of the stomach, bad. Bottom of the stomach, okay. All right. Top of the stomach, loop connection, bad. It results always in high rates of bile reflux esophagitis, and general surgeons don't do that. And when bariatric surgeons, even a great bariatric surgeon, Dr. Mason did it in 1967, he found the other general surgeons were right. You shouldn't do that. Now what general surgeons took away from that is they said, oh, the loop is bad. But for a hundred years, since its invention in 1885 by Theodore Billroth, general surgeons, trauma surgeons, and oncologic cancer surgeons have routinely used a loop to connect the stomach to the bowel. But they don't do it high. They commonly do it low. 
Now, the mini gastric bypass is attentive to that dictum from the history of general surgery. Very simply, the gastrojejunostomy, the connection between the stomach and the bowel, should be low. Simple. Sounds simple. Sounds clear. If you look, we have anatomic pictures, you can look online, you can look at my YouTube videos. The gastrojejunostomy, that connection, is so low in the stomach that you should see that connection down low, almost in the mid-gastric portion of the cavity, which is at the area of the transverse colon. Okay, so if you think of the abdomen and split it in half from top to bottom, the transverse colon is between the middle and the uh, upper third, and so it's fairly low down. The esophagus is at the top, okay? The gastrojejunostomy connection between the stomach and the intestine in the mini gastric bypass is placed low in the abdomen close to the transverse colon. On the contrary, the old mason loop places its gastrojejunostomy connection high in the abdomen, close to the chest and the EG junction, the esophagus, bad. Now, online, if you look for pictures, you can Google mini gastric bypass, you'll see some surprising things. You'll see, for example, a nice video describing how to perform a mini gastric bypass, and we have slides from one of these videos, and it shows creating a very short pouch and then connecting the loop high in the chest, near the stomach. No. No, please, no. That's not a mini gastric bypass. I created the mini gastric bypass. That's not a mini gastric bypass. It does have a loop, but it's much more similar to the old Mason loop. And so we would like to argue that an intelligent patient and a well-informed surgeon and physician should understand no, this is not a mini gastric bypass. If you want, you could argue and say, no, it's a single anastomosis. That's fine. You could call it an omega loop. That's fine. But it's not a mini gastric bypass. A mini gastric bypass is performed in a certain way, and a gastrojejunostomy, a connection that's up high, a few centimeters away from the esophagus, is not. And there are several photographs, pictures, videos, and actual live surgeries when that rule is broken. And these are good, intelligent, honorable surgeons, but we feel uh, that this breaches one of the basics of general surgery training, which is a loop high in the chest, at high in the abdomen, near the chest, near the esophagus, is always wrong, always incorrect. Now, we may be wrong, and if you want to keep doing that as a surgeon or a patient to have that, that's fine. But please don't call it a mini gastric bypass, because we believe very vigorously that's an incorrect technique. Again, if you look online, you can see animations, correct drawings, and uh, surgery performing mini gastric bypass, where there is, in fact, a very long gastric pouch. And the gastrojejunostomy, the connection, is down lower in the abdomen, distant from the EG junction, and that's, we believe, one of the critical success factors of making a mini gastric bypass. We're not telling anybody else they can't do it anywhere else. It's just our belief this is a unique factor, and we think a critical success factor of the particular operation entitled the mini gastric bypass. Anybody can do anything else they want. We have no criticism with them. Do as you wish. But this is a mini gastric bypass. If you're going to do something else, give it another name. Call it an omega loop, whatever. But don't call it a mini gastric bypass, please, because that is anatomically and physiologically a totally different procedure. So what we would like to argue very simply is that misunderstanding the basics of general surgery leads to a difference in understanding when these surgical techniques are applied to bariatric surgery. Okay, let's see if we can go over some basic general surgery. We just like to remind ourselves of some basic general surgery. So we're going to talk about two kinds of gastric resections. That's two ways of taking out part or almost all or all of the stomach. Okay, one is called the total gastrectomy. The whole stomach is taken out. Or a subtotal gastrectomy. A subtotal gastrectomy, almost all of it is taken out. And then we're going to talk about another kind of removal of the stomach called an antrectomy or a distal gastrectomy. And in this case, just the bottom part, right before you go to the duodenum, just the end of the stomach is removed. 
And if we understand those two basic general surgical procedures and how they should be treated, you can come back and think more about this discussion that I provided in the beginning about the difference between the old Mason loop and the mini gastric bypass. All right, well, we should probably just remind ourselves, if uh, we're not talking only to surgeons, of the anatomy of the stomach. And so basically it's kind of a baggy looking outpouching of the gastrointestinal tract, which is other, otherwise mostly tubular. And what you have at the top is the esophagus. Then you begin with the body of the antrum and the fundus, the top of the body. And then the stomach turns to the patient's right, to the right side, kind of almost like a hockey stick. So you go from vertical, dropping down, coming from the esophagus, going down the abdomen, and then you take a right. So if you think about it, there's a big, stretchy upper part called the body, and when it takes to the right, the muscle changes, it gets thicker and tougher, and that's called the antrum. And at that junction, we're going to talk about a lot, because that's a critical place to perform a resection, a removal, of part of the st stomach. And so every day in the United States and around the world, thousands of people have a portion of the lower part of the stomach taken out, and a little bit less often, the whole part of the stomach comes out. And there's some basic rules we've learned after a hundred years and more doing these kinds of operations. And particularly what I want to emphasize, and I'll say multiple times, and I've said it already, is if you take out the bottom part of the stomach, the antrum, Hooking it back together with a Bill Roth II, which is called a loop, or a loop that's called a Bill Roth II, is regular general surgery. Basic, routine general surgery. And no general surgeon is fussing about this. Nobody's worried about it, nobody's talking about it, because it happens all the time, it's published all the time, it's a routine part of general surgery. Okay? And if you look at it, you can look at some pictures of these resections, these operations where they take out the bottom part of the stomach and that's called as I say an antrectomy or a distal gastrectomy and in the online descriptions and photographs and videos of surgery when you take out the bottom part of the stomach hooking it back to a loop of small intestines really common we do it every day as surgeons all the time lots of pictures so distal gastrectomy or antrectomy and a Bill Roth II loop common 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 it's called Bill Roth because in 1885, Bill Roth did the first one. So it's named Bill Roth II. It's not called a loop or omega loop or anything like that. It's called Bill Roth II, a loop gastrojejunostomy. Loop gastrojejunostomy, a little tougher to type out, easier Bill Roth II. Same thing. Look online, see some pictures. There's a slideshow associated with this talk. Take out the bottom of the stomach, hook it up with a loop, and we do it every day. Surgeons do it, especially Special kind of surgeons do it, general surgeons do it, oncologic cancer surgeons do it, trauma surgeons do it. There's no fussing about it amongst experts. They just do it all the time. No big deal. Okay? And if you look at Tractomy and Bill 2 and a picture of an MGB, they're the same. <laughs> Let me say this again. And Tractomy and Bill 2, look at the pictures, it's exactly the same as a mini gastric bypass. They're the same. Similar, similar, similar. So if you wanted to, you could describe the mini gastric bypass as a collis gastroplasty with an anticholic Bill Roth II gastrojejunostomy. Now at the time that I invented it, that seemed like a mouthful. But it's regular general surgery. It's nothing special. Okay? It's done all the time. It's a routine part. And if you look, it's the same as an antrectomy in Bill Roth II. Take out the bottom of the stomach and hook it to a loop. Every day, MGB, routine general surgery. Same all the time. We do this all the time. Now, there's another kind of operation called a total gastrectomy or a subtotal gastrectomy. That's where you take out not the bottom, the lower one-third of the stomach, but almost all of it or every bit of it. Total or subtotal gastrectomy. Okay, if you look online, you can see how we hook things up after you do that. After a total or subtotal gastrectomy, we have to recreate the gut. We have to put it back together. Never, 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 never with a loop. Let me say that again. Never, never, never with a loop. Always with another connection called a Ruin Y. And there's a simple reason for that. We used to do that in 1901 and 1905, 
and it doesn't work very well. If you put a loop next to the esophagus, high up, when you take out the whole stomach, bad things happen. Don't do it. General surgery teaches us something really simple. Never reconstruct a subtotal or total gastrectomy with a Bill Roth tube. Never. 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 All general surgeons should know this. All cancer surgeons know this. Every picture you see on the internet, almost all, it clearly show this. So what we have here is the basics of general surgery. This is really simple. I shouldn't have to say it. It's surprising that most bariatric surgeons are not really understanding this, but we're just going to say something really simple. If you take out the bottom of the stomach, you can hook it up with a loop, and most people do almost every day. Okay? Take out the bottom of the stomach, hook it up with a loop, a Bill Roth II, common general surgery every day. On the other hand, take out almost all the stomach, or all of the stomach, and hook the esophagus or the top of the stomach to a loop, never. Never, 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 never. But that's what the old Mason loop was. It violated one of the most basic principles we've learned from gastrointestinal surgery in 1885 and the early 1900s. Putting a loop next to the esophagus, bad. Results in bad outcomes. Old gastric bypass, 1967, bad. So, again, not to be critical, Mace, Dr. Mason is a wonderful, terrific surgeon. But he did something that is guaranteed to fail based on the experience we've had with general surgery, which is a subtotal gastrectomy attached with a loop will result in crippling bile reflux esophagitis. And so it was abandoned fairly quickly. It violates some of the basic principles of general surgery. So just to say again, Mason Loop reconstructed the stomach with a loop placed high in the abdomen near the chest. It failed. We could figure it was going to fail in retrospect now because it violated one of the principles of basic general surgery. Again, really simple. Total or subtotal gastrectomy should never be reconstructed with a Bill Roth II. Should never be reconstructed with a Bill Roth II. Should never be reconstructed with a Bill Roth II. Should never be reconstructed with a Bill Roth II. Bad idea. The mini gastric bypass is shown to be an excellent operation, but many new surgeons, and actually some of the old critics, couldn't understand this critical anatomic difference. We believe that the mini gastric bypass has a critical success factor, has several, but one critical success factor, the long gastric pouch so that the connection, the gastrojejunostomy, is in the area of the antrum and the distal stomach. And if you don't do that, you're not doing a mini gastric bypass. And in general, you're potentially violating a basic principle of general surgery. So this brings up a question that came up online. Well, how long should the pouch be? <laughs> okay. Well, people are different size. So the, the length of the pouch shouldn't be measured in centimeters. It's measured basically simply on the anatomy of the stomach. Okay, so let's remember, general surgery, it's acceptable to do antrectomy and distal gastrectomy in a Bill Roth II. It's never acceptable to do a total or subtotal gastrectomy with a Bill Roth II. So, if you're going to do a mini gastric bypass, you have the esophagus, you have the antrum, you have the stomach. Where do you have to create the pouch to make the anastomosis? Right in the antrum. So that means how long the pouch is, is how long does it take to get to the antrum. Okay, a big person different than a thin person, right? So, it's not in centimeters, it's as long as you can make it, so that you're doing the anastomosis, matching the anatomy, essentially, of an antrectomy in a Bill Roth tube. Because that works well, and remember what doesn't. Right. So, we have some pictures here of the anatomy you can look at. You can look at the body of the antrum of the stomach in particular, and then compare it to the anatomy of a mini gastric bypass. The length of the pouch should be from the EG junction to beyond the beginning of the antrum, so that you get a long gastric pouch, and that allows you to recreate the results of an antrectomy in Bill Roth II, which works very well. It's not perfect, but it's a great operation, done all the time. If you ask in centimeters, you're confused. 
But certainly you should look at the location of the pouch and the creation of the pouch should be long so that the anastomosis lies essentially at the transverse colon. So we want a long gastric pouch. We have YouTube videos where you can see this in detail. And again, we just summarize and say the mini gastric bypass is shown to be an excellent operation. Many new surgeons, many online videos, many online drawings, and surgeons uh, who have talked about it uh, misunderstand this critical important feature. We think a critical success factor of the mini gastric bypass is that long gastric pouch so that the connection, the gastrojejunostomy between the stomach and the bowel is placed down low so that we're essentially recreating the anatomy and physiology of an antrectomy in Bill Roth II. Thanks very much and uh, please feel free to look at our slide presentation and our online videos to gain more clear understanding of this very important uh, piece of information for creating a mini gastric bypass. Thanks very much.